Bwana asifiwe. Amen. Bwana asifiwe. Amen. Yes, my name is Maina. Naitwa Maina. I love the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal savior. Nampenda Bwana wangu Yesu Kristo kama mwokozi wa maisha yangu. The Lord saved me when I was in school in 1972. Bwana aliniokoa nikiwa shuleni mwaka wa 72. And he has walked with me. Na ametembea nami. Um it's not because of how I know or what I have learned in the walk sio sababu ya kile nijuacho ama kile nimesoma katika safari it is his firm grip on me nikunishika kwa kwa hakika mimi that has brought me this far ambao imenileta umbali huu si uwezo wangu mm. uh, recently i went to i come from muranga Uh, natoka pale Muranga where we plant tea ambapo tunapanda majani so there are valleys and hills pako na zile uh, miteremko na went, milima i went with my glad children na nikaenda na wajukuu wangu and they requested me to walk them down to the tea farm wakaniuliza niwapeleke chini kule kwenye shamba ya i ya promised majani. them the following day i would do it na nikawaahidia kwamba siku ifuatayo ningalitenda so in, in the morning we woke up ndio basi asubuhi tuka and we went around and started descending to the valleys na tukaanza kwenda kule kwenye miteremko my wife joined me mkawangu akaungana nami and uh, it was difficult na ikawa ni ngumu tu the youngest is two years old yule mdogo kabisa ako miaka 2 and uh, he was fighting it very hard alikuwa anapata ikiwa ngumu sana and as we went down na tukiwa tunaenda pale chini he would sleep angetaleza so i held on to his hand hivyo basi nikamshika mkono and uh, since i'm not very young na kwa sababu si mchanga sana i would hold my the other hand would hold the tea brush uh, tea bushes na hivyo mkono mwingine ungalishika ile majani and then we walk down alafu tutembee chini and when he walks and sleeps akienda kuteleza tena i hold him up namshikilia and then we walked down alafu tunateremka tena till we reach down there hadi tukafika hale chini kabisa ule mwa miaka miwili aliweza it's not because he could sio kwa sababu angaliweza but because i held his hand firmly lakini ni kwa sababu nalishika mkono wake kabisa i'm here because the lord has held on to me firmly hivyo basi niko hapa kwa sababu bwana amenishikilia mkono glory to his name bwana asifiwe glory to his name bwana asifiwe yes i know the bishop najua askofu those old days we would call him pastor miaka ile ya kitambo tungalimuita mchungaji wetu now i find myself calling him bishop all the time sasa najipata nikimuita askofu kila wakati yes mm. and uh, i know alice na pia alice namjua and once more thing na kitu kidogo tu alice is a woman of god alice ni mama wa mungu i don't know what you know about her sijui mwajua nini kumhusu i don't know what the bishop thinks about her sijui askofu anafikiria nini kumhusu but i know she is a woman of god lakini najua kwamba ni mama wa Mungu When God gave me a certain job Mungu aliponipatia kazi fulani I was given the opportunity to pick a secretary Nikapatiwa ruhusa ya kuchagua msaidizi I checked in the company there were many Nikaangalia kwenye kampuni palikuwa kuna na wengi But I thought no I need somebody this this place where I'm working Ninahitaji mtu nikawazia I need somebody Nahitaji mtu who is not just a secretary Sio tu atafanya ile kazi ya uandishi mbwakali lakini ambaye atawika if you can understand kama unaelewa so i thought of alice hivyo basi nikadhania kuhusu alice she was working in a good place alikuwa anafanya kazi mahali pazuri but i requested alice to come and join us nikamuuliza alice aje aungane nasi and since i had the authority to employ na kwa sababu nilikuwa na ruhusa ya kuandika the interview was already done kwa hivyo ile interview ama ilikuwa ishafanyika and she got the job na akapata ile kazi why did i bring her kwa nini nalimleta because in this walk kwa sababu katika safari hii you need to be careful unahitaji kuwa wa makini i knew the bishop nilimjua askofu i knew his wife nikajua mkewe before she was even married kabla hata hajaolewa and in this office la kwa ofisi hii i need somebody seriously 
Christian. Ninahitaji mtu ambaye ni Mkristo wa hakika. If a bribe comes this way, ambaye hongo ikija hivi, I will look back and I nitaangalia hivi ni muone. If a daughter of Eve comes, kama binti wa Eve waangeja, I need somebody ningalitaka mtu who you stand. Mbaya atasimama. And you know it worked so well. Na ilifanya kazi vema sana. Because I was answerable. I was accountable to her. Kwa sababu naliwajibika kwake. I knew she was a Christian. Nilijua ni Mkristo. I knew her husband. Nilijua mume wake. A pastor. Mchungaji. And every day we met in the office. Na kila wakati tulipatana ofisini. You can see she made my life very easy. Unaona alifanya maisha yangu yakawa sawa. There are many things there are many things that happened I may not tell you now. Kuna mambo mengi yalitendeka singa aliweza kukuambia. Lakini ni mama wa Mungu. When things were hand, mambo yalipokuwa magumu, she would come with a verse. Angekuja na andiko. And I would go home and tell my wife, you know what Alice told me? Na ningeenda nimwambie mke wangu unajua Alice aliniambia nini? God bless you Alice. Mungu akubariki Alice. God bless you. Mungu akubariki sana. God bless you. Um the bishop askofu we have worked many days. Tumetembea tu masiku mingi. And he told me, na kaniambia to come. Nije because there is a project kwa sababu muko na mradi in the church. Katika kanisa. He told I laughed. Nikacheka because he told me there are two things here. Kwa sababu aliniambia pana mambo mawili. There is a driving or master of ceremony or whatever about the bus. Aha, shughuli za bus. And there is the preaching. Na pana maubiri. And uh, his wife has been asking him. Nask, um, are, you, are you going to do both? Utafanya yote. So he said, akasema, I will get somebody. Wacha nitafute mtu. And he picked on me. Na kanichagua. Then decided, alafu akaamua. He will not preach. Sita sataubiri. I'll do the preaching. Nitaubiri. He will do the other one. Yeye atafanya ile nyingine. That's another dox. Aha, hiyo ni jambo. In my life, aha, katika maisha yangu, I've not been a preacher. Mimi sijakuwa mhubiri. But in logistics, lakini katika mambo ya kuhusika, you will find me there. Utanipata pale. Whenever we went to preach with him, tulipoenda kuhubiri naye, the logistics were mine. Aha, mimi nilikuwa na usika na mipangilio. The preaching was his. Yeah. Why I took him for to go and uh, testify. Mali nilipompeleka aende ashuhudie. Sticks were mine. Yeye ndiye alishughulika na mipangilio. Yeye angalihubiri. Fortunately he wore a beard. Uh, wakati ule alikuwa na ndevu. He couldn't, he couldn't make it. Hangeweza. Bwana swe. Amen. Uh, so I'm um, doing what he should be doing. Nafanya kile ambacho angefanya. And he would do what I should be doing. Na atafanya kile ambacho ningefanya. Bwana swe. Amen. But we are in a project. Lakini tuko wote kwa mradi. And thinking of a project. Na tukiwazia mradi. In the house of the Lord. Katika nyumba ya Bwana. Nothing is done Hakun... without the purposes of God being fulfilled. Hakuna kitu kitendekacho bila makusudio ya Mungu kuachikwa. God does kia. not wake up one night. Mungu haamuki tu siku moja. And save you. Na kuokoe. No, God does not wake up and do a project. La hasha Mungu aamuki tu asubuhi na anafanya mradi. Because it's a new day. Kwa sababu ni siku mpya. No, his plans are eternal. La hasha mipangilio yake ni ya milele. Your salvation was not just when you came forward and you are prayed for and you confessed and you became a Christian. Wokovu wako haukuwa tu vile ulikuja mbele ukaombewa ukaokoka. Your salvation was planned long long before the foundations of the earth basi wokovu wako ukapangiliwa kabla hata ya maumbile ya dunia christ did not just shed his blood on the cross at calvary kristo hakumwaga tu damu yake pale calvary about 2000 years ago miaka 2000 iliyopita his blood was shed before the foundations of the earth mhm damu yake iliweza kumwagika kabla ya misingi ya dunia the bible says a lamb slain before the foundations of the earth. Biblia inasema kwamba kodoo aka aka akachinywa kabla hata ya 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 misingi ya dunia. So before the world was before you were born before anything your salvation was already planned. Hivyo basi hata kabla hujazaliwa kabla ya mambo yote wokovu wako ukao umepangiliwa. So even this project we are in kwa hivyo hata mradi huu tulioko ndani yake. If it's God's project kama ni mradi wa Mungu it's not because the lady is not of a bus. Sio kwa sababu tu wanadada walifikiria kuhusu 
the best. things of God are eternal. Mambo ya Mungu basi ni ya milele. And thinking about this I thought let's do a project. Na tukiwazia hivi nikasema acha tufanye mradi. And we do a project that stays forever. Na tutafanya mradi uishiwe milele. And let's see how God did a project. Alafu tuone vile Mungu alivyotenda miradi. God had always desired to dwell with his people. Mungu alitamani kila wakati kuishi na watu wake. And the representation of God dwelling with the people na basi kuonyesha kwamba Mungu alikuwa anaishi na watu wake in our days and the, from the days of Moses kutoka siku zetu na hadi siku za Musa was what nini ilikuwa was what ilikuwa nini it was a temple aha ilikuwa hekalu si ni hekalu so let's do a temple Kwa and let's, let's see where God started his project and where he's taking it. Tufanye hekalu tuone Mungu alianzia wapi mradi wake na anaupeleka wapi. And what is a temple? Na basi hekalu ni nini? What's the difference between a temple and a building? Utofauti wa hekalu na jengo ni nini? When God dwells in a place. Mungu aishipo mahali. When God dwells in a construction building. Mungu aishipo kwa jengo lililojengwa. When God visits a tent. Akiendea ama akitembelea hema. It changes. Yabadilika. It becomes the dwelling place of God. Inakuwa mahali pa kuishi pa Mungu. It becomes a temple. Inakuwa hekalu. Do you know you are the temple of the Holy spirit je wajua wewe ni hekalu ya roho mtakatifu why kwa nini because god dwells in you kwa sababu mungu anaishi ndani yako so god had planned to dwell with his people hivyo basi mungu alikuwa amepangilia kuishi na watu wake before the days of uh, moses hata kabla ya siku za musa those days of abraham siku za abraham ibrahim they would go and if they want to sacrifice they raise an altar and then they do the sacrifices there walikuwa maenda na kama wangelitaka kuweza kufanya kufanya hekalu wangeweza kufanya pale and they leave a stone na wanawacha jiwe and they move on na wanaendelea mbele so let's start from where god started kwa hivyo tuanze mahali mungu alianza alafu tuone inaelekea ama inaisha wapi and let's see what happens within the project na ni nini inatendeka katikati ya mradi Abraham Abraham was afraid of God. Alikuwa rafiki wa Mungu. Are you afraid of God? Je, wewe rafiki wa Mungu? Do you call yourself a friend of God or does God call you his friend? Je, wajiita rafiki wa Mungu ama Mungu anakuita rafiki yake? There, there, there is a difference. Pana tofauti? There is a difference. Pana tofauti. And uh, God decided to tell Abraham. Mungu akaamua kumwambia Abraham to take his son achukue mwana wake go up a mountain aende mlimani mount moraya mlima wa moraya or the place of moraya ama mahali pale pa moraya and there na pale he would pick a mountain angalichukua mlima he would take pick a place angalichukua mahali where he wanted him to sacrifice ambapo angalipenda aweze kutoa dhabihi his own son mwana wake wa pekee abraham abraham did it akafanya vile took his son chukua mwana wake took the things he took you know chukua mambo ya vitu vile alivyochukua and, and went up the mountain kaenda mlimani he reached a place fika mahali where he was shown by god ambapo alionyeshwa na mungu when he reached there he asked god the things he asked alipofika pale aliuliza mungu mambo aliyomuuliza i have everything else except niko na kila kitu the lamb lakini sina ile kondoo and god provided na mungu akaleta and uh, I ask my friend I have many friends here Niko na rafiki wengi basi nitamuuliza rafiki yangu And I love them Na ninawapenda Brother Peter Ndugu yangu Petero Can you read for me I'll be asking you to read many times Nitakuwa nakuuliza utusomee mara kadhaa Genesis 22 verse 2 Mwanzo 22 And he said Take now thy son thy only son Isaac whom thou lovest and get thee into the land of Moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of amen mm-hmm. god chose 
the place Mungu akachagua mahali God chose the sacrifice Mungu akachagua dhabihu What we pick from here Twashika nini kutoka hapa is the willingness ni ile kupendelea and the obedience of Abraham ama kukubalia kwa Abraham kuti do God's will kuti mapenzi ya Mungu He was a friend of God Alikuwa rafiki yake Mungu He did it Alifanya vile When he reached there alipofika pale God provided the lamb. Mungu akapeana shamba ama akapeana pointing to Jesus Christ. You know it. Akimuelekeza Yesu Kristo. You see where we have started? Tunaona mahali tulianzia? Mount Moriah. Pale mlima Moriah. With the sacrifice. Akiwa na dhabihu. Pick it from there. Hebu ishikilie pale. Carry that notion with you. Hebu ishikilie jambo lile na wewe. Years passed. Miaka imepita and things went on. Na mambo yameendelea. It came a time when the Israelites Kafikia wakati wana wa Israeli went to Egypt. Wakaenda pale Misri. You know the story. Najua ile hadithi. And after many years, na 400 baada ya years, miaka mingi, God sent Moses. Mungu akamtuma Musa to go and bring them to the land and our to the inchi. land where he would dwell with them inchi ambayo angeliishi na wao and moses did his job na musa akafanya kile ambacho alistahili kufanya with all the problems he had ukiwa na mashida mingi aliyokuwa nayo the doubts he had akiwa na shauku he went aki alienda exodus Mwanzo 25 verse 8 and 9 Samahani kutoka Exodus kutoka 25:8 and 9 So Moses brings the people Kwa hivyo Musa amewaleta watu They are in the wilderness Wamefika jangwani He went up to the mountain Akaenda mlimani He is given the commandments Na akapatiwa amri and he comes down with them Na anakuja nayo Let's read there Hebu tusome And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them according to all that I shew with thee after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof even so shall ye make it Amen Amen God tells Moses Mungu huyo amwambia Musa make a tabernacle nifanyie hekalu make a sanctuary nitengeneze a jumba in form of a tent ikiwa inakaa kama hema because this one kwa sababu hii is mobile hii ni ya kutembea nayo this one you be traveling with utakuwa unaenda nayo so it's a tent kwa hivyo ni hema and in that tent na katika hema ile in that tabernacle katika hema ile ama pale put the ark of the covenant weka sanduku la agano the ark of the covenant sanduku lile la agano verse down there verse 22 ukiendelea pale 22 if you can read ukiendelea ukitusomea and there i will meet thee i will meet with thee and i will commune with thee from above the mercy seat from between the two cherubims which are upon the ark of the testimony of all the things which i will give thee in commandment unto the children of israel amen god was to come mungu alikuwa akuje and meet his people na apatane na watu wake but uh, in the tent in the in the t- ark lakini pale kwenye lile sanduku there were things that were put in there palikuwepo na vitu vilivyokuwa vimewekwa ndani there were the tablets palikuwa na uh, zile uh, maandishi and there was some manna palikuweko pia na ile maana to remind them of what god had done kwa kumbusha tu kile mungu alikuwa amewafanyia even the rod of aaron was around there hata ule mtu wa aaron ulikuwa pale the one that budded um, ambaye alikuwa nayo for remembrance ya kukumbu God was to meet them there in the tabernacle. Mungu alikuwa apatane na wao mahali pale. But look at to Jesus. Lakini mtazamie Yesu. It is not just a tabernacle. Si tu hekalu. It is not just a nak. Si tu as again sanduku. It's a project. Basi ni mradi. We are in a project. Tuko katika mradi. But this project is Lakin, moving around. Lakini mradi huu wasonga. It's moving around. Wasonga tu. And for 40 years. Miaka arubi It's moving around. Wasonga tu. It Moses disappears. Musa anaondoka. Joshua comes. Joshua yuaja. Takes the project. Anashikilia mradi and crosses the Jordan. Na anapita Yordani. 
and takes the ark and puts it somewhere and pitches the tent and there people would go and meet God but Joshua Lakini picked the place. Joshua alichagua mahali. Remember I told you Moriah God chose the place. Sijui kama wakumbuka nilikwambia Moriah Mungu ndiye aliyechagua. Moses could not pick any one place. Musa hanga alichagua mahali popote. It is as God led him. Ni vile Mungu alivyomuonyesha. And he pitched it wherever God wanted. Na alipeleka mahali Mungu alitaka. Joshua crossed the river. Joshua akavuka mto. And he took it to a mount akaupeleka mlimani and put it he chose yeye mwenyewe alichagua and you know what happened na muelewa vile kulitendeka things happened mambo yalitendeka after joshua left baada yoshua kuondoka things happened mambo yalitendeka god led his people mungu akawelekeza watu wake through the prophets akupitia manabii through the judges kupitia wa, 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 ha, hakimu and uh, they would go the prophets would go to the hill na manabii wangeenda kwenye milima and do that which was needed na wangelifanya kile ambacho kilistahili kufanyika but then lakini basi so comes Saulo yuaja and uh, people have asked for a king watu wameuliza mfalme and god gives them a king na mungu anawapatia mfalme but god is not happy with Saul lakini mungu hafurahishwi na saulo because of disobedience kwa sababu ya kutotii and he chooses na anachagua oh bwana swear amen the plans of god mipango ya mungu he chooses a man anachagua mtu after his heart ambaye ako anampendeza ama anashikilia moyo wake a man after god. God's heart. Mtu ambaye ako katika moyo wa Mungu. How can David be a man after God's heart? Daudi angalikuwa vipi katika mpangilio wa moyo wa Mungu? You know David. Mnajua Daudi. You have read about him. Mmemsoma kumuhusu. He had many vitukos. Alikuwa na mambo mingi, vituko mingi tu. How could he be called a man after God's heart? Basi angaliitwa aje mtu ambaye ako moyo wa moyo wa Mungu anapendezwa naye You see I have told you Alice is a good Christian is a good lady Nimewaambia Alice ni dada mzuri That is my opinion Hiyo ni kulingana nami David Daudi. was called a man after God's heart Akaitwa kulingana na mtu ambaye ako kwa moyo wa Mungu Not by man Sio kwa sababu ya bin Adam but by God Lakini kwa sababu ya Mungu kwa Mungu is not anybody's opinion. Si, si mtu yoyote tu anatoa maoni. Despite the his many failures. Haijalishi alianguka vipi ama alikuwa. He was a man after God's heart because God called him so. Alikuwa anampendeza Mungu ama alikuwa ndani ya moyo wa Mungu kwa sababu Mungu alisema. God created him so. Na Mungu alimuumba vile. How do you become a man of after God's heart? Utakuwa vipi mtu ambaye akao ndani ya moyo wa Mungu? Oh, how can we interpret this? Ama tutaweza kuikalima When we read of what he did. Ah vile tunasoma alivyofanya. How can we call him so? Tutamhitaje vile? Ah God qualifies it. Aha Mungu anaiwekea uhakikisho. I will let you know. Nitakwambia tu. Can you read for me? Acts 13:22. Matendo ya Mitume 13:22. Uh, Uh, I see my brother is not wearing uh, his shoes. Naona ndugu yangu hana viatu. I think we are in a holy place. <laughs> <laughs> And nobody told me. Na hakuna aliye akuniambia. You know Moses was told to remove your shoes. Unajua eh? Musa aliambiwa toa viatu. Where God is is a holy place. Mali Mungu yuko ni mahali patakatifu. In the temple when God descends it becomes a holy place. Katika hekalu mali Mungu ameteremka ameshuka. It becomes a temple. Inakuwa hekalu. Amen. Amen. I was waiting for my brother to read. Nilikuwa ndugu yangu. And when he had removed him he raised up unto them David to be their king to whom also he gave testimony and said I have found David the son of Jesse a man after mine own heart which shall fulfill all my will Amen Amen When you read that Ukisoma hapo it's a statement Niandiko a man after my own heart Aha nidhibitisho mtu ambaye moyo wangu unapendezwa naye Who will do all my will ambaye 
atafanya matendo yangu ama makususi yangu if you want to be a man a woman after god's heart ukitaka kuwa mama ama mwanadada ambaye mungu anapendezwa naye kwa moyo wako you must qualify for the last part of that sentence lazima upate uhakikisho kutoka kwa mahali pa mwisho pa sentence ile you do all my will utafanya matendo yangu yote how many of us call ourselves people of god ni watu wangapi wanajiita watu wa mungu do we do the will of god tufanye matendo ya mungu mapenzi ya mungu not just the will aha sio tu mapenzi all the will of god aha la hasha ni mapenzi yote ya mungu to do that kufanya vile and if you do it na ukifanya hivyo you will be a person after the heart of god utakuwa mtu ambaye you anapu... will fail unaweza anguka you will do many bad things utafanya mambo mabaya but you will do all the will of god lakini utatenda mapenzi yote ya mungu and when you do the things that are not according to the will of god na ukifanya kulingana na mambo ambayo si mapenzi ya mungu because you do it kwa sababu utafanya you do as david did utafanya kama daudi alivyofanya he looked he searched he knelt he prayed piga magoti he he asked for forgiveness akaomba msamaha he sought after god akatafuta mungu and let me tell you one of the bad things he did nikwambia kitu moja kibaya alichofanya you know what he did unajua nini a bad thing kitu kibaya so you know mwajua you know mwajua I know what you are thinking about. Najua unafikiria nini? But I'm not there. Lakini si pale naongelea. I'm not there. Siko pale. Towards the end of his reign, akiendelea mwisho wa uongozi wake. God had given him conquest. Mungu alikuwa amempatia ushindi. And Israel was secure. Na Israeli ilikuwa iko imelindwa. The enemies were defeated. Amadui wakashindwa. Now they were secure. Sasa walikuwa wako na usalama. David had moved from uh, wherever he was to to, to Jerusalem. Da- yakakuwa ametoka alikokuwa hadi Yerusalemu they were settled walikuwa wametulia you know what he did alifanya nini wajua a bad thing alifanya kitu kibaya he yeye carried out a census aliyesabua watu ama alifanya uhesabu wa watu i know you are not thinking about that sijui kama mnaelewa hivyo you that is not serious ah hiyo si kitu kukubwa si, 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 you are looking for this number so that when we do the census it will be easy si unafanya tu mahesabu ndio sasa watu kaweze kugawanya mahali bema you it is not an issue si kitu ambacho ni chisi chisi cha kawaida david carried out a census daudi alifanya uhesabu wa watu against to the will of god kinyume na mapenzi ya mungu and god was very unhappy with him na mungu alikasirishwa sana naye but this is a man after god's heart lakini huyu ni mtu ambaye moyo wa mungu ama anafurahishwa moyo wa mungu afurahishwa naye he realized alitambua he was not told akwambiwa not by by any prophet sio na nabii yoyote alitambua he has done wrong amefanya makosa his heart was grieved moyo wake ukawa na uzuni because he had counted the people kwa sababu alihesabu watu and he went to god praying for forgiveness na akamwendea mungu akimuomba msamaha when he did alipofanya vile he was told yes you have done it akaambiwa ndio umeomba msamaha and kiboko itatembea lakini lazima kiboko itatembea It's the king who has done the mess. Ni mfalme amefanya makosa. But is the people who will suffer. Lakini ni watu wataumia. You know he was told to pick three things. Aliambiwa achague mambo matatu. You know the story. Mwajua ile hadithi. He was a clever man. Alikuwa mtu a man after God's heart. Mtu ambaye Mungu anapendezwa naye. He chose to la- rather be punished by God than people or enemies. Aliamua afadhali yeye adhibiwe na Mungu isiwe watu. And then God he picked the last one. Akachukua ya mwisho. And the angel of the Lord was sent. Na malaika wa Bwana alitumwa to carry out the judgment. Kuweza kufanya uhuku and the people were killed Na thousands wali wawa. not david sio daudi not his sons si wanawake israelites wa israeli and david was grieved na daudi aliuzunika i'm the one who sinned ni mimi nalitenda makosa why are they dying mbona wanakufa the angel of the lord malaika wa mungu 
came towards Jerusalem. Akaja, akaja Jerusalem. Sword drawn. Akiwa amebeba upanga to strike Jerusalem. Kugonga Jerusalem. As he was going towards Jerusalem. Alipokuwa anaelekea Jerusalem. He reached a place. Alifika mahali. You know where he reached? Unajua alifika wapi? Are you aware where he reached? Unajua alifika wapi? He reached at a place alifika mahali referred to in the bible inaitwa in the bible katika biblia the threshing floor uh-huh. of arawan 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 something like that inaitwa vile <laughs> when he reached there alipofika pale the sword drawn akiwa amebeba upanga god relented mungu akatulia and stopped him akamwachisha don't what you know who that place wajua mahali pale that threshing floor of that man mhm that place mahali pale is exactly ni kwa hakika on mount moriah pale mlima moriah where God had chosen Mungu alikuwa amepachagua for Isaac to be sacrificed. Mali ambapo Isaac alikuwa atolewe dhabihu. I told you God chose a place. Mungu akachagua mahali. He chose the sacrifice. Akachagua dhabihu. When the angel is coming to strike wakati malaika anakuja kugonga it happens to fall a certain way ina, inaonekana tu ama inafuatilia. And when he reaches the same place na kifika mahali pale God remembers Mungu anakumbuka his sacrifice dabihu yake i told you it is pointing to jesus nakwambia kwamba inaelekeza kwa yesu god says stop watch forgiveness is over oh, forgiveness has come msamaha waja stop no more killing ah hapana kuua tena wacha at the place mahali pale God had chosen. Mungu alikuwa it's amechagua. It's not a coincidence. Sio tu kwa ajali. Things of God are not done by coincidence. Mambo ya Mungu hayafanyiki tu kwa ajali. They did not just happen to reach there. Malaika sio tu ati alifika pale. It was God's eternal design. Basi ilikuwa mipangilio ya Mungu ya umilele. And therefore, hivyo basi David came. Daudi akaja. Prophet God. Aha, uh-huh. Nabii God. Told him. Akamumbi. Go to that place. Enda mahali pale. And sacrifice. Na ufanye dhabihu. You know what happened. Na unajua kilichotendeka. David went there. Daudi akaenda pale. He asked this man to give him the place. The... Ak- akauliza apatiwe mahali pale. Anunue. Aha, uh-huh. anunue. But the man refused. Lakini jamaa akakataa. He said no no I'll give it to you. Nitakupatia. David refused. Daudi akakataa. He bought it. Akainunua and sacrifice. Na akafanya dhabihu. And uh, the the anger of God was taken away. Aha, na hasira ya Mungu ikaondolewa. My time is going very very Muda very, wangu very fast. Wakimbia kwa haraka. Then we move on now. David wants now to build he, he feels that he is in a place and God the tent the ark are out there and <laughs> he's living in a good place <laughs> he's a man after god's heart yeah, yeah, he must build mungu. something Lazima for god but mungu. god tells him no no no, no, no. your hands are full of blood no you will not do it vile. but i have lakini ni one of your children na wako mocha, solomon solomon you do it for me Suleimani atanifanyia vile David being a man of God akiwa mwana wa Mungu mtumishi wa Mungu did all the provisions akafanya mambo yote he got the gold he got the silver he got the wood he got everything for the ark of the for the temple of the Lord aha akakusanya vitu vyote sababu ya hekalu ya Mungu and kept them in store na akaviweka kwenye akaviweka for the construction akaviweka kwa tayari wa ujenzi and when it was time for him to disappear na ilipofika wakati yake kuondoka he called his son akamwita mwana wake and told him about it akamwambia kuihusu the plan ha mpangilio the design of the of the temple yani mpango ama vile ile hekalu ingalika the furnishings aha utengezi 
was uh, given to David by God kila kitu ikapewa kwa Daudi na Mungu as a pattern of the tabernacle above aha kama vile ekalu juu David drew it aha Daudi akaichora passed it on to his son akampitishia mwana wake and gave his son the design na akampatia mchoro then he charged the people alafu akaweza kutia watu to support the young man kuweza kumsaidia mwana wake to build the temple kujenga hekalu why kwa nini because it is in the temple that the lord would dwell with his people kwa sababu hekalu ndipo bwana ataishi na watu wake and once it is set in jerusalem na ikiwa ima yako yerusalemu god dwells with his people aha mungu aishi na watu wake he will forever dwell with israel basi kila wakati ataishi na waisraeli and that happened na hivyo ikatendeka he passed on akafa enters solomon solomon sulemani Solomon Sulemani God said Mungu akasema that he loved Solomon Alimpenda Sulemani The Bible says Biblia yasema the Lord loved Solomon Mungu alimpenda Sulemani Not what you say you love God Sio kile ambacho unasema tunampenda Mungu Oh God loves me Ama Mungu ananipenda We know he does Tunajua anakupenda But is recorded in the Bible Lakini imeandikwa kwenye andiko The Lord loved Solomon Bwana alimpenda Sulemani It had to be written Lazima ingaliandikwa From what we know about Solomon Kutoka kwa kile tujuacho kuhusu Sulemani God had to write that Mungu lazima angeandika For us to accept the things he did Ili kwamba tukubali mambo aliyo even to accept the scriptures he wrote hata kukubali maandiko aliyoandika surely god had to write that lazima mungu angaliandika vile if he hadn't kama hangeandika we would be doubting that scripture tungalikuwa tunatilia shauku mambo yale because we know he was a frail man kwa sababu tunajua alikuwa mtu aliyekuwa na god loved solomon lakini mungu alimpenda sulemani And Solomon comes. Babasi Sulemani yuaja. And now it is time to set the temple. Na sasa ni wakati wa kuweka hekalu. And he constructs the temple. Na anaitengeneza hekalu. Meticulous. Anaitengeneza kwa uangalifu. Akitu cha kupendeza. And finishes it so well. Na anaimalizia vema. That it brings glory from everywhere. Hadi inaleta utukufu kutoka kila mahali. A wonderful job. Alifanya kazi njema. You know the stones. Kwa hivyo mnajua mawe. David had left the stones. Mungu Daudi alikuwa ameacha mawe. He made the provisions for the stones. Alikuwa ameacha nafasi ya mawe. For timber for everything. Ya mbao na kila kitu. Solomon comes. Sulemani yuaja. The stones are dressed far away. Aha, mawe ile yachongewa mahali mbali chiseled far away inachongewa mbali sana every stone fitting its place kila jiwe likiwa latoshelezea nafasi yake very well na inakuja inatoshea vema every stone well cut kila jiwe likiwa limekatwa vema for stone purpose mahali pake you know we are living stones of god unajua sisi ni mawe isiyo ya bwana you are carefully cut wewe umekatwa vema to fit a certain purpose kuweza kufikilizia na maksudi fulani not the way we build and when we see the stone here tunagonga tunagonga sio vile tuchengavo alafu tukiona jiwe twagonga ili itoshelezee it's a perfect job aha ni kazi iliyotendwa vema it was pointing to you and me ilikuwa yaonyeshea wewe na mimi as the living stones of the temple of god kama mawe ishio ya hekalu ya bwana oh, god does not just do things mungu atendi tu mambo when you see things and read them in the bible Uki... they have a purpose aha ukiona vitu na unazisoma kwa bible kwa biblia ujue iko na makususi yake so he finished it very well hivyo basi anaimaliza vema and it brought glory to god na ikaleta utukufu kwa mungu and you know na waelewa that temple aha uh-huh, hekalu ile was was bearing a testimony ilikuwa imebeba ushuhuda people from far and wide watu kutoka mbali came to see it ambao walikuja kuona and one of them you know is the queen of sheba ana mmoja wao ni ni queen of sheba malkia wa sheba samahani she came she saw she Al- She had heard about it. Alikuja akaona alikuwa amesikia kuhusu. She heard about Solomon. Alikuwa amesikia kuhusu Solomon. But she came. Lakini alikuja so it. Akaiona. Akaona Solomon. Aha, uh-huh. akaona Sulemani. So the so 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 the temple. Akaona hekalu. So even the stairs. Akaona hadi pa kuteremkia. Climbing up to the 
temple the furnishings the vessels aha a gentle woman aha mama praise the god of israel oh mama akam huyo akamsifu mungu wa israeli we are the temples of christ sisi ni hekalu ya kristo well finished ambapo vimekamilika vema when people see you watu wakikuona do they give god praise je wanamsifu mungu do they do they see the finished work of christianity done in you je wanaona aha kazi ya ukristo ambayo imekamilika ndani yako when they see the old you wakiona wewe ulio wa kitambo and they see the saved you na wakiona wewe uliokoka do, do they give god praise je wanamsifu mungu you are supposed to bear the testimony of the lord unastahili kuwa na ushuhuda wa bwana as a temple of god kama hekalu ya bwana you bear the testimony of the lord una ushuhuda wa bwana so we finish the temple kwa hivyo tunamaliza hekalu once it is finished hekalu imemalizika is dedicated inawe inawekewa wakfu and people came na watu wakaja the choir came choir ikaja trumpets were done aha zikamibinanda virubi vikaja wonderful the priests were there wakuhani wakawapo and uh, songs were sung nyimbo zikaimbwa and the lord visited the temple na bwana akatembelea hekalu the cloud was so heavy wingu likawa lizito sana they couldn't see one another hawangeonana it changed from being a construction ikabadilika kutoka kwa ujenzi it became a temple ikawa hekalu the lord consecrated it mungu akaiweka wakfu akaiweka yake that's the bible what the bible says biblia yasema hivyo He dedicated uh, Solomon dedicated it to the Lord. Akaibatiana kwa Mungu Sulemani. The Lord came and consecrated it. Bwana akaiwekea nadhiri yani akaiweka ikuwa yake. It became the temple of the Lord. Ikawa hekalu ya Bwana. Solomon decided to that day Sulemani akaamua siku ile to pray. Kuomba. Thank God we all can pray. Ha ni vizuri tunamkana. You know Solomon was not a, a Levite. Unajua Sulemani hakuwa mulawi. He was not the bishop. Hakukuwa askofu. He was not the the, the prophet. Hakukuwa nabii. He was a, 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 a man from Judah. Alikuwa muyudea. He was a king. Alikuwa mfalme. Not a prophet. Hakukuwa nabii. But thank God. Lakini nashukuru Mungu. He was able to pray. Aliyesa kuomba. You are not the bishop here. Wewe sio askofu. You are not the pastors here. Wewe sio mchungaji. But thank God you can pray. Lakini nashukuru Mungu unaweza kuomba. You are allowed to pray. Umekubalishwa kuomba. He prayed. Aliomba. And he prayed a very serious prayer. Na aliomba ombi lililo la nguvu, la nguvu. A very serious prayer. Ombi la 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 uzito. A prayer which you people know. Ombi ambalo nyinyi mnajua. For for the sake of time. Kwa sababu ya muda. I will not go into much reading. Sitaendelea kusoma sana. But his prayer you know he was talking about if your people if they sin if they do this if they are do that and if they come to this house which I I have built for you mm-hmm. and pray what 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 if a foreigner is passing through here kama mtu ambaye ni mkenya anapitia to this place na kuja mahali hapa bishop and prays naombe hear them muskize if your people do wrong this was prophetic of him if your people do wrong watu wako wakitenda mabaya and you scatter them na uwatawanye and in foreign land they are mistreated na wakienda kwingine wataweza kuniakiwa and while there they pray and face this place na wakiwa pale wakiomba waangalie mahali pale muskize that was his prayer ombi la kelile wonderful prayer ombi la maana sana and god came ana mungu akaja after that they celebrated and left wakasherekea na wakatoka in the night mungu akamtembelea usiku he told him i have heard your prayer akamwambia nimesikiza ombi lako and i want you to read now second chronicles 7:14 which you all know Aha, but, 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 but let nyakati. him read god came and told him i have heard your prayer mungu akamwambia nimesikia maombi yako and when i wish you are there Aha uh-huh. and when they pray na walipoomba when i have shut the heavens wakati mbingu imefungika when things have happened mambo yametendeka yes read now tusome 
If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive them, forgive their sins and will heal their land. Amen. Mm -hmm. So if there is drought, Kama pana if there are bad things, like, like we always pray here, Kama pana mambo mabamba, if they umba, pray, waki umba, I will hear. Tawaskiza. I will heal their land. Nitaponya inchi yao. Hearing is not just hearing. Kusikiza si tu kusikia na masikio. I will answer. Ni, nitajibu. I will answer that prayer. Nitajibu ombili ile. But you know there was a problem with that prayer. You know this man was a king. He was not a prophet. He was not a Levite. His prayer had something missing. Can you read, read 15 and 16? You know we always reach there. And, uh, and we pray and we say. If my people, they pray, they humble, I will hear, I will heal their land. At least God was answering a prayer. And the prayer, can we hear? Now, my, my eyes shall be open and my ears attend unto prayer that is made in this place. For now I have chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be there forever, and mine eyes and mine heart shall be there perpetually. Amen. Amen. What did he say? Alice Manini. He will hear. Ataskiza. He will forgive them. Atawasamehe. He will heal the land. When they pray, Wakiomba, in this place, mahali hapa, which I have consecrated, nadhiri, ama wakfu, when they pray, Wakiomba, in this place, aha, mahali hapa, it was an answer to Solomon's prayer. Ilikuwa jibu la Maombi ya Sulemani. What had he asked? Nini? When they do all those things haya yote, and come here in this in this house na waje hapa nyumba, which I have built ambayo jenga, and pray na nime, na nino, na waombe, hear them. Waskize. Yes, I will hear. Mm -hmm. Mungu hata waskiza, I will hear. Waskiza. The only problem Kitu tu, ama shida tu, it was in that place in the temple for you and me you must be passing through Jerusalem then go to the temple then pray you will be hand for the Jew he can come if he is far away and tormented he can pray facing Jerusalem, Jerusalem God you hear do you see the problem do you see your problem yeah mm. you had no place and when we pray that prayer prayer we leave it at 14 but thank God for Jesus thank God for Jesus he came and one day he declared not the mountain not in the temple no it is by spirit and truth if it was not for Jesus you would have to go to Jerusalem to that place and pray there but even that's a disaster. Because God told Solomon. And I hope you are forgiving me now because I'm past time. But half of my time has been taken by this man. So forgive him. And Bishop, when you come to your job, I will have, we will have, we will just go quickly. So relax, eh? Uh -huh. Relax, eh? Are we together? Uh -huh. Bwana swe. sana. Thank Jesus. He came. Because God told Solomon two things. Aha, mambo mawili. A warning. Aha, akam, akamtia onyo. And a promise. 
na ahadi what was the promise ahadi ikawa nini if you kama wewe obey and do my statutes ukitii na ufanye mapenzi yangu follow after your father david ukifuatilia babako daudi i will nita and when he says i will na kisema nita he will atafanya i will establish you nitakuwekeza ama nitakusimamisha the things i promised david mambo nalimwambia daudi i will do through you nitafanya kupitia wewe amen amen you will not miss a man to sit on the throne hautakosa mtu wa kuketi kwenye forever aha nafasi ile kila wakati wote hallelujah hallelujah that's a promise god told him even ndio ahadi mungu alimwambia for you wewe Now Sasa. if you don't kama hautafanya vile the warning mm-hmm. if you kama wewe ili ni onyo or you are sons kama mwana wako ama wewe ama mwana wako don't do these things msipofanya mambo haya i'm paraphrasing because you have to move quickly ninaweza kuiwe ninaeleza they don't do aha msipofanya what, what am i going to do aha nitafanya nini i'm going to scatter israel nitawatawanya wa israeli and this house na nyumba hii which you have built ambao umejenga i'll destroy nitayaribu god to destroy the temple mungu kuharibu hekalu this temple hekalu hili which he has visited ambaye ametembelea this beautiful Aha. place mahali hapa pazuri i will destroy nitaharibu now you and me if he destroys that temple kama angealiharibu ile hekalu or even the jew ama muyahudi if it is destroyed kama imeharibika and that's where he promised to hear the na prayer na ndipo aliahidi kuwasikiza wakiomba what will you do nini utafanya what you happen utafanyani do you know the temple was destroyed unajua hekalu liliharibiwa Do you know that temple was destroyed? Je, unajua hekalu lile liliharibiwa? For sure Solomon, kwa hakika Sulemani, disobeyed God. Ali 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 alikosa kutii Mungu. You know the many bad things he did. Unajua mambo mengi ambayo alifanya Sulemani. He even wrote a book. Hata aliandika kitabu. And told us, na akatuambia, that he has tried everything. Akasema amejaribu chochote duniani. Everything. Kila kitu. He has even tried folly. Being foolish. Alikuwa amejaribu sasa kukuwa mjinga. He has tried everything. Alikuwa amejaribu kila kitu. Whatever his eye desired, he did. Macho yake aliyotamania alifanya. And his wisdom did not depart. Na hekima yake haikumuondokea. So he knew what he was doing. Alikuwa anajua anafanya nini. So he, he he did exactly what God had warned him not to do. Alifanya vile Mungu kwa hakika alikuwa hataki afanye. 400 years after miaka 400 baadaye he is gone ameenda his descendants are gone what people are gone. Have, 400 just, years later miaka 400 mm-hmm. years later miaka 400 oh 400 400 i told you he's on taking my time miaka 400 samahani Who you know what happened? Wajua ilitendeka nini? Nebukadnezar visited. Nebukadnezar akatembea. He came visiting. Akakuja kama akakuja kutembea. And by visiting he destroyed Jerusalem. Na aliharibu Yerusalemu. He destroyed the temple. Aliharibu hekalu. He took the those vessels that were in the temple. Akaharibu vifaa vile vilivyokuwa hekaluni. The gold, the silver, everything. Aha, fedha dhahabu zote. The temple of God hekalu ya Mungu was destroyed. Ikaharibiwa. And the temple was the representation of God's presence uh, with his people. Aha, uh-huh. na hekalu lile lilikuwa aha uh-huh. likiwakilisha uwepo wa Mungu na watu wake. It is destroyed. Imeharibiwa. Where they would go to pray Ma- is destroyed. Mali wangeenda kuomba imeharibiwa. Oh. Mm. God is good. Mungu ni mwema. Through the prophet Jeremiah. Kupitia nabii Yeremia. He had said you go for 70 years. Alisema utaenda miaka 70. And for 70 years they were out. Na miaka 70 walikuwa wameondoka. But there was a man reading the word of God. Lakini pana mtu alikuwa anasoma neno la Mungu. And there was a man praying. Na alikuwa na mtu anaomba. Daniel was praying. Daniel alikuwa anaomba. Daniel was praying. Daniel alikuwa anaomba. And he saw. Na akaona. Another man was reading. Kuna mwingine alikuwa anasoma. Called Cyrus. Anaitwa Cyrus. 
a gentle aha but he read aha alikuwa pia anasoma and he saw his name na kaona jina yake in the scriptures katika maandiko that he would do a job ya kwamba angalifanya kazi ah oh, he rose up to the task akainuka kufanya ile kazi sent people back to jerusalem tuma watu pale yerusalemu released to them kawawachilia gave them the things they wanted akawapatia vitu walivyotaka go and rebuild the temple enda ujenge hekalu we are still thinking about god's project bado tuko kwa mradi wa bwana so in short kwa kukatisha they came back wakaja the time of ezra aha wakati wa ezra they rebuilt the temple wakajenga hekalu a good one but not like the old one lakini sio kama ile nzee this one e <laughs> brought both weeping ileta kulia and rejoicing na kufurahikia the old man wale wazee must have been over eight and night miaka 80 because they were out there for 70 years walikuwa miaka 70 kule nje they had seen the temple before they left walikuwa wameona hekalu kabla waondoke the temple took time to build aha hekalu lilichukua muda kujenga and when it was finished na lilipomalizika they looked at it wakatazama they cried wakalia when they remembered walipokumbuka the old temple aha hekalu lile la kitambo what is this now sasa hii ni nini The young men wale vijana wadogo and they are many here na kunaona wengi hapa those below 70 wale ambao chini ya miaka 70 who had not seen the first one hawakuwa wameona ile ya kwanza when they saw this one wakiona hii they rejoiced walikuwa wanafurahikia what a temple wanaimba some are singing wengine wanaimba others are crying wengine wanalia you know the disaster with that temple unajua nini lililokuwa jambo lililokuwa na ile hekalu ark of the covenant was not there oh aha sanduku la agano halikuwepo nebukadnezar you, destroyed everything mfale mfalme nebukadnezar alikuwa ameharibu kila kitu to death we don't know where the ark is hadi leo hatujui hekalu li wapi to death hadi leo some say it is in ethiopia wengine wanasema iko hapa ethiopia some people go there apa Ethiopia and thank god we don't know where it is ah hatujui iko wapi shukuru you know why kwa nini people would be worshiping it watu angalikuwa wanaiabudu i'm telling you nakwambia haven't you seen them go to jerusalem je unajiona watu wakienda yerusalem to the wailing war wanaenda pale kwenye ile 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 kuta christians wa kristo they pick papers wanachukua makaratasi and they put between the, sto- the stones wanaweka katika ma- katikati ya mawe as a prayer kama maombi What if the ark was there? Kama ha je kungekuwa na ile sanduku. This is just one of the stones. A few stones are there. Jiwe tu kidogo, majiwe kidogo. They are all flooding there. Ah wanakimbia pale kuweka maombi. Thank God we don't fight it. Tunashukuru atuipati because it was, it was not the ark. Kwa sababu haikukua it was God's sanduku. project. It ilikuwa mradi wa Bwana. It was pointing to Christ. Ilikuwa inamwelekeza Kristo. Bwana swe. Amen. Bwana swe. Amen. So, hivyo basi. Zerubbabel finishes the ark is, the, the, the temple is there. Zerubbabel anamaliza aha and, and the years go on. Na miaka inaendelea. And Christ comes. Kristo yuaja. He goes to that temple. Anaenda kwenye hekalu ile. That temple was done by Zerubbabel. Ilifanywa na Zerubbabel. Refurbished by Herod the king. Ikiwa imetengenezwa na Herod mkuu. An atheist. I mean, not a man of God. Mtu ambaye si wa Mungu alikuwa ameitengeneza. He redecorated it. So it was good. Ni nzuri. Yapendeza. Even the curtain was there. Aha, palikuweko pia na pasia. But there was no ark. Lakini hapakuwa na sanduku. That's where Christ visited. Hapo ndio Kristo alikuujia. That's where Christ worshiped. Kristo akaabudu. That's where Christ chased away. Kristo akafukuza. The robbers and the money changers. Aha, wale waliokuwa wanabadilishana fedha. It is that temple. Mali pale. Zerubbabel refurbished by Herod. Zerubbabel ameijenga na ikatengenezwa na Herod. And his death. Aha na hapo ndipo kifo. Split the curtain. Aha ikakatisha ikakata ile pasia. That is the same tempo. Mahali pale pale ama hekalu ile. Because the order is now changing. Kwa sababu sasa mipangilio yabadilika. Christ told them not a single stone will be on top of the other. Kristo akawaambia hakuna jiwe hata moja litakuwa juu ya lingine. The second temple. Aha 
not one of them it will be destroyed you know 70 years later miaka 70 baadaye ad 70 after christ 70 ad 70 ad 70 that temple was destroyed ikaribiwa hekalu ile it's no longer there haipo tena what there is now sasa kilichoko if you go to jerusalem ukienda yerusalem is the dome of the rock aha ni ile jiwe okay mm. it's it, it's a muslim muslim build muslim oh, uh, ni mosque jiwe la muskiti it, um, that mosque aha muskiti is called the rock of the dome oh inaitwa dome of the rock aha dome it's a dome Mm-hmm. Ni of the rock. Ya, ya majiwe. Where is it? Iko wapi? Mountain Moriah. Iko pale Mlima Moriah. Where is Moraya. it? Mlima. The plot of Arawana. Mhm. Plot ile ya Arawana. The place God chose. Mahali Mungu alichagua. What is there now? Ni nini iko pale? A Muslim mosque. Ni nyumba ama ni msikiti wa Waislamu. You know why it doesn't bother me? Unajua kwa nini inanipia inanipea wasiwasi? You know why it doesn't bother me? Oh, unajua kwa nini hainipi wasiwasi? Because I am the temple of the spirit. Kwa sababu sasa mimi ni hekalu ya Bwana. Bwana swe? Amen. There are many things to be done on that mountain. Kuna mambo mengi yanaweza fanyika mlima ule. As we move on to the future. Tukiendelea mbele. But as of now. Lakini sasa Christ comes. Christ you are he goes to that temple anaenda mahali pale he chases people out of it anaenda anafukuza watu kutoka he pale pre- he predicts its downfall anaweza ana anaongelelea ana kuhusu kwangu he tells them kwa bring this temple down leteni hekalu chini and in three days na siku tatu i will raise it up nitainua and they want to kill him for that na wanataka kumua kwa sababu ya hiyo but ile. he has changed the whole lakini philosophy lakini ame change amebadilisha philosophy it's no longer a stone building sio tu jengo la jimawe it's no longer uh-huh. a stone building sio sio tena aha uh-huh. uh, jengo lile it is the living temple aha ni hekalu ishio is the temple ni hekalu it is christ ni kristo from Abraham kwanza Abraham through Moses kufikia Musa through David kwenda kwa Daudi through Solomon kwenda kwa Solomon through Zerubbabel kupitia Zerubbabel it is Christ ni Kristo haleluya haleluya and we fall in him ah jesi tumejazwa ndani yake yes ni mwema now you can pray sasa unaweza omba from zimamani kutoka zimamani because the temple is here kwa sababu hekalu li hapa and when you pray na ukiomba he says au hear anasema nitalisikia hallelujah hallelujah he will hear atasikia god is good mungu ni mwema god is good mungu ni mwema and not only that na sio hivyo tu You and me mimi na wewe are living stones sisi ni jiwe lishilo that's what peter calls us even the peter on twitter we are not idle dead stones sisi sio mawe iliyokufa we are living stones mawe ishio in the temple of the lord katika hekalu ya bwana anything living ni kitu chochote kisisipating in something kinahusika kwa kitu a dead stone aha uh-huh. mawe iliyokufa does not participate ai ai hausiki it, it just bears the burden in kwa tuna mzigo amen amen hallelujah hallelujah christ is good bwana ni mwema i must go quickly lazima ni niende so haraka christ comes christ amekuja makes us living uh, living living temples ametufanya hekalu uh, ishio we are living stones and as well as temples of the holy spirit sisi ni ma, ni jiwe lishilo ama wewe ni jiwe lishilo na pia ni hekalu ya roho mtakatifu but there is something small lakini kuna kitu kidogo with the permission now of the bishop, nikipatiwa na ruhusa na bishop because i must be very clear first corinthians 3:16 hebu tusome wa korintho wa kwanza 3:16 ah uh, you know if you are there you can read kama uko pale if you are not there kama hauko you know so no ye not that ye are the temple of god and that the spirit of god dwelleth in you amen mm-hmm. uh, go, go on go on a bit 17 If any man yes, yes. If any man defile the temple of God 
him shall God destroy. Amen. For the temple of God is holy. Amen. Which temple ye are. Hallelujah. Let me remind you something small. Solomon was told if you mess around, if you sin, if you don't fall after my statutes and my decrees, I will destroy this building. And I told you it happened. It was destroyed. You are now, just a warning, you are now the living temple of God. And if a man defiles this temple, I will destroy. When God says he will, he will take caution. He destroyed that temple. If you are the temple of God, take care how you live. He says, I will destroy. Just a warning. Just a warning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But we rejoice in the Lord. Let's look into the future. And finish now the temple. What happens? This, you know, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. And if you are the temple of God, and flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Something has to happen. Flesh and blood must disappear. So that you can inherit the kingdom of God. That's why the motto must wear the immortality. That's why you either die or you'll be translated be given a new body if Christ finds you living or you have died he will revive you, rapture you up dress you in a new body because the flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God but since you are the temple of God that lives forever because the desire of the Lord I told you was to dwell with his people. So you must live forever in the immortal body. So this body will die. But you will be given the immortal bodies. And finally, when uh, Christ comes, uh -huh, na Christo akicha, let's see the final end of this project of God. Revelations. Ufunuo. 21 to 2. mbili. Revelations 21 verse 22. Oho, aha, ufunuo and I saw no temple therein for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the New Jerusalem Jerusalem John looked Johanna Kangalia there was no temple. Why? Kwanini? Because the Lord Almighty and the Lamb of God were the, Lamb, were the temple and the light of the city. Look at that. Do you see the plan of God? He starts from Mount Moriah pointing to a temple comes to Moses comes to 
many others, Wengine, David, David Solomon, Solomon, Zerubbabel, Zerubbabel Herod is also playing ata, a part. Ata Herod the temple we know in Jerusalem. The ultimate plan of God is that the Lamb of God, our Lord Jesus Christ, will be the Lamb, will be the temple, and will dwell with his people forever and ever and ever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's plans are not just done like that. Eh? Look where he started. Look where his eyes were looking. From Moriah, he was seeing Christ. Moriah, he was Christo. seeing the new Jerusalem. But he had to go through the wilderness. We had to go through many, many things. We had to shift the ark. We had to do many, many things. things. The final ultimate thing is God dwelling with his people forever. In the project of God has eternity tied to it. You may not understand it. You may not understand why you are buying a bus. But if it's God's project, somebody will be visited, somebody will get saved, somebody will be a new living stone, somebody will be in New Jerusalem. The plans are God are diverse. You may not understand it. But wherever you are, like the temple in front of Queen of Sheba let people see you and praise God of Israel. If you are living temple now like you and me saved of Christ let people see you let them say like she said I was told now I have seen and surely the half was not told. And praise be the Lord Na, God of Israel. Bwana, mungu wa Israel Let God be praised because of the way people see you. Wacha mungu wa the kwa way you vile do things. Vile and that is the meantime. Kwa sasa. That is the meantime. Kwa sasa. Because flesh and blood kwa sababu, must get away. Nyama na damu there will be the new Jerusalem. Jerusalem Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where will you live forever? We, mahali and we say, na tuasema, Lord, bwana. let it be. Wacha iwe. Let it be. Wacha na iwe. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Mungu